How you doing guys? This is Eric from rulethewasteland.com and secretofthenternet.com. This video is about the three things that every prepper should have inside their car pretty much at all times. And it's actually a lot more than three things. I just broke it down into the three kits basically that I have in my car and I'm gonna show you the contents of them in this video. And the first one is a tool kit, just a very basic tool kit. The second one is a what I would call a roadside kit or a road kit sort of overlap with the toolkit, but in this case, I just happen to have them in separate containers and I wanted three things for the title. And uh, the third would be a first aid kit. Now, before I get into the contents of those videos, these are just the things that I leave in my car at all times. And your situation may be different. You need to tailor it for that. Mine is almost exclusively tailored for everyday type occurrences. It is extremely unlikely in the course of my day to day, week by week life that I am more than 20 miles from my house. So I don't have a lot of the standard get home type things. If I go on a long trip, I take a, like a bug out bag slash get home bag with me. So don't freak out when you don't see that type of stuff. I don't have like food. I don't have a lot of that stuff in there because there's just very few scenarios that I'm venturing that far from my house, I could just jog home or something. In the event that I do, I do put those items in there. Another thing that you won't see in here is self-defense stuff because these are items that I leave in my car. I'm talking about items that you are always in your car. Self-defense stuff I carry with me always, but I don't leave it in my car. It's more often on my person. So even if I technically put something in the glove box, I don't count that as an item that I'm always leaving in my car because with the exception of maybe a pepper spray or something, I have a funny story about that, though maybe I'll tell you sometime, that, um, I don't leave that stuff in my car, it's not a great idea. This stuff is usually in the trunk that I'm gonna show you. So without any further ado, I'm gonna show you the three kits that I keep in my car and what's inside each of them. All right guys, so you'll have to pardon my uh, mic cable here if it gets in the way. Anyways, this is the first thing I have, which is a tool kit. Now this is not by any means a high quality tool kit because like I said, I'm not that far from my house at any given point. I'm not expecting to do major repairs of any kind. Really the most extensive thing I'm gonna do is a flat tire change or something, but it's still a great idea to have just a basic toolkit in here. So this is something that you see at a like Harbor Freight type stuff. Not a high quality set, but it will get you through most roadside type mini repairs if it's something you can do there anyway. It's just a, a socket set with metric and standard with a little driver on there, different screwdriver ends for the driver, an adjustable wrench, the, uh, I actually just use a socket handle, so it's not in here. I'll have to put it back in here. And uh, some Allen wrenches, some uh, crescent wrenches, screwdriver, pliers, things like that. Nothing crazy, just a basic toolkit, socket set with drivers, screwdrivers, wrenches. Very useful to have on hand. The one thing I might add to this would be some, uh, maybe a utility knife or something like that. Maybe a little bit of a string or wire or something. Now this is, sort of an extension of that is what I call my road kit. And uh, there's things I keep on hand for any roadside emergency, kind of complementary to the tool kit. I have a pair of gloves in here if I need to move something and not get dirty. Some jumper cables, which you always want to have, a roll of duct tape. These are some, some big con thick contractor plastic bags. You can use those for all sorts of different stuff. I'm not going to get into exactly all the different things you can use them for, but you can even use them for shelter if you need to. You can use them for a, you know, poncho if you need to, anything like that. And in this bag, which is simply one of those uh, green grocery bags, which they're pretty useful because you can hold a lot of stuff in there, they're pretty tough, is just a change of clothes. I've got some socks, a t-shirt, an extra pair of jeans. It's not a bad idea also, if you have an extra set, to put um, an extra pair of, you know, just ratty shoes in there. Because I mean, you may, or what's actually really good, if you have one lying around, is a pair of overalls just like zip up in the back or even the front overalls that you can just throw on on top of what you're wearing. So if you're gonna have to kneel down in the grass to change a tire and you're coming back from a holiday Christmas party or something, you don't have to sit there and change clothes by the side of the road. You can just whip into the coveralls, get down and dirty, you need to put your gloves on, take it off and you will not have messed up your good clothes. So that's pretty much the, the roadside kit. And uh, that's going to cover most of your scenarios for just minor instances. You may want to throw a set of uh, flares or reflectors in there if you have to do like a highway road, excuse me, highway side tire change so you don't get run over. But like I said, this is more dedicated towards uh, just city in city. And if I go on the highway, I add more stuff. So that's pretty much everything when it comes to the car kit that I have. And 
most of the time you're not going to need it, especially if you have roadside assistance, things like that. There's no reason to eschew super useful modern conveniences like that. They are definitely worth it. I recommend doing it. And then you won't even need it because being prepared is not about doing it yourself. It's about not having to deal with bad situations or being able to deal with them effectively. And roadside assistance is a, and cell phones are a great way to do that when available. So take advantage of it. Next up, something a lot of people don't have and really should have is a first aid kit in their car. Because not just for you, but maybe you come upon an accident where someone else has been injured and uh, you want to be able to help them out. So I'm going to go over this real quick. Now, as with anything else, including the other kit, I know every time I do one of these videos, I get the what ifers that show up and say, what if this happens, you'll need this, or you're missing this, you're missing this. It's always a great idea to, um, to think about the things that you might need, but you don't want to let it get into that, that realm of just fear-based what ifing, where you, you end up not doing anything because you're paralyzed by coming up with ways that, or circumstances that could defeat your system and defeat your preparations. Like, Oh, what if this happens and that's gonna, then that won't work, that kit won't work, so then you end up doing nothing. Is this the perfect kit? All this what I'm showing you? No. Is it even a great kit? Probably not. But it's better than you know 90% of what most people have and it'll help out a tremendous amount and if I can make it better later then I will. But obviously something is better than nothing and in this case this is going to be super useful, especially the first aid kit and the roadside kit will cover at least 50%, probably closer to 75 or 80% of all situations and make them a lot easier. Um, one thing that you may want to put in the roadside kit, which I didn't mention because I covered it in a past video, is maybe a little bit of cash. I like to carry it because I don't like to forget that it's in there, but that's an idea too. So onto the first aid kit. This is just what I would call a basic first aid kit. Now, this isn't a care kit. Now, a lot of people have items in their first aid kit that I would consider not first aid items, but personal care items. And those are certainly useful, stuff like anti-itch stuff, Tylenol, you know, little things like that that are not related to first responder type care, they're just related to comfort. And I have a few of those items in here and I would have more if I'm going farther away from the house, but like I said, I'll, I'm driving around, I'm close to my house, I'm also close to gas stations and CVSs, so this is not an apocalypse kit, this is not a trauma kit, and this is not a care kit. So there's a lot of things that you could add that would maybe useful, but I'm just not interested because this is mostly to be a first responder in any sort of roadside accident that I either am in or witness when I'm driving. And a certain, a couple other random items like these. These are Johnny on the go portable unisex urinals. It has something in there that absorbs a gel that absorbs the liquid and eliminates the odor. I'll put links to all the stuff that I'm that you can buy on Amazon in the description below. So these are great if for whatever reason you can't stop. I was actually in California recently and none of the places, that, none of the businesses there had public restrooms. Even like the gas stations in Northern California, they wouldn't let you, they weren't like public. So it got dangerous a few times. I almost wish I had some of these with. Luckily I haven't had to use these. A lot of place, a lot of times you can just go by the side of the road, especially if you're a guy, but it's still useful to have these on hand. Give you a little bit of peace of mind if there's nowhere you can go. Maybe it's just fields as far as I can see and you don't want, there's no woods you can actually run into. Just grab one of these, dip into the back seat of your car, piss into one of the bags, and you can throw it away later. Sort of on that same line is these uh, go towels. If you need to wipe up, it's 100% cotton moistened washcloth, individually wrapped. Just give you a little wipe down if there's some sort of mess or if you have anything bad happen. That's not really first aid related. Same with these tissues. These are useful for all sorts of random items. These are more care items, like I was saying before, but they do some sometimes have first aid implications, but I'm gonna get them out of the way before getting into the more heavy first aid stuff. As always, you have the little the gauze pads. Now, what I don't recommend, these are actually sterile pads. I don't recommend just regular band-aids for the same reason that it's just not a real first aid type item. That's a just a comfort item. You're not gonna be putting a Band-Aid on an actual wound, anything that I would consider a real wound, just maybe a sore or something like that. And I have those at the house. I'm never gonna be five miles away from my house and in desperate need of a Band-Aid. You know what I mean? If I'm that bad, I can just buy one. Because like I said, this is not an apocalypse kit. But sterile pads are something that you could use for semi-major cuts, scrapes, open wounds, burns, things like that, that uh, you may encounter and if you're first on an accident scene or if you're in an accident. Along those lines 
is a cold compress. Obviously not for, it's chemically activated, not for super intense injuries. This is more likely to be used in an emergency for cooling someone down if they're overheated than it is for any sort of bruise. But if you, someone slams their head, you wanna get ice on it right away. This is a good instant cold compress. Or if you wanna stick it in someone's armpit or neck if they start overheating. Some more gauze uh, sponges and pads. Honestly, most of what you need is in, if you're first on a scene and just want to stabilize someone, it's just some sort of like bulky dressings, pads, cloth to staunch the flow of bleeding, cover the wound, things like that. So you want multiple pads. And in that vein, I have these um, military triangle emergency bandage trauma wound dressing. And I have a bunch of those because these are just what you would put pack onto a big wound. If you got up somewhere and someone's like just totally messed up, you'd be putting a lot of these dressings on there. So I have about four of those and another four or five of these uh, fluff rolls. They're like a large roll of some sort of gauze. I have a neck stabilizer. Now, honestly, I don't recommend you messing with someone's neck if there's any risk of neck injury or head trauma because you could make it worse. You just wanna totally not move them at all if at all possible, but you know, there could be instances where you think there's a, a neck injury, but the car is on fire, something like that, and you need to get them out of there, put this on them, it'll at least help stabilize the neck, or even an instance where your neck is hurt, but you know it's not a spinal injury, it's just a strained muscles, and then you still have to get home or get to the hospital, and this could make it a little bit more comfortable, stabilize the neck. This is a uh, more of an ACE bandage to hold on to, a, you know, wrap around a sprained limb or to secure different types of bulky dressings and gauze pads to a wound. I have more. These are just cloth pads. They're not. They're clean, but not sterile. And you guys need to understand the difference between that when you're dealing with a first response type situation. You're not talking about an apocalypse or shit hit the fan scenario, but just a normal first aid where you're literally rendering aid first before they get. Um, professionals on the scene, you don't have to worry too much about sterility because you're not gonna be doing, and you want it to be clean, but if it's an open wound that was, you know, because it got dragged across the concrete, the wound is not sterile. So putting a clean bandage on it, even though it's not sterile, and you know the ambulance is on the way, you're not talking about a huge risk there. And, uh, but you do want to worry about your risk from dealing with these people. So one thing that's always super important is protection for yourself against their blood and things like that. So we have a bunch of latex gloves individually wrapped. Again, these don't necessarily need to be sterile. They just have to be clean and new. And I have mouth covers in case they spit on you or you don't wanna cough into their and eye cover so blood doesn't get on you as well. That's for your protection. Here's another bandage, another couple bandages, another couple gauze sponges. And then something very important, actually before I do that, I have quick clot, and this is for minor wounds. These are more for, uh, I would use on myself. I probably wouldn't use these on someone else because it actually is, it can burn. It can burn the skin and things like that. So you gotta be really careful with this. And if you're expecting that an ambulance is coming, then you probably don't wanna use this because they're gonna, unless it's a, an emergency. But I have these because I already had them. They are sterile and they're, um, they will clot the wound. So in a more of an emergency where maybe there wasn't a chance of a first responder coming anytime soon. I just like to have a couple of those on hand. But more importantly than those, if you're talking about crazy bleeding, are tourniquets. This is uh, two different tourniquets that I have. One is a Patriot product ripcord tourniquet and one is the uh, standard military tourniquet that you can use. So these are what's important for if you come across someone who has massive uncontrollable bleeding through like a femoral artery or brachial artery or something and you know, and they're just gushing blood and you don't know if it's gonna, if they're gonna even last for five or 10 minutes until an ambulance gets there. You wanna be able to throw these on there, staunch the flow of blood at least for a few minutes. Just remember that when you do, learn how to use these properly. There's simple videos that you could find online that will show you, they're pretty damn simple. And just remember to mark them either on their forehead usually or something with a marker of blood. And I have a marker in this kit for just that purpose with the time because you can have tissue damage if you leave a tourniquet on for too long which probably isn't a risk if you know that if in just a roadside crash, ambulance should get there, but might as well follow protocol. They'll probably fix it when they get there, but always put it on there. So here's some more gauze pads I have. And then this is a little uh, kit I have. I actually do have a couple band-aids in here. I forgot they were in here. So, all right, I'm wrong. 
fuck me, right? Anyways, more pads, gauze pads. Here's the marker I was talking about for marking people, writing on things, whatever you want. Now these are some sterile, I'm sorry, not sterile, but they're uh, iodine swabs for disinfecting. They're individually wrapped, so for minor cuts or even fairly serious cuts, but not you know not massive ones you can disinfect. Butterfly closures. These are actually more important than regular bandages or like band-aids because they can cover more serious wounds and keep them closed until you get stitches. Something that would probably require stitches, you can throw a butterfly bandage on there, keep it from widening up and opening up on you until you get stitches. This is a very small kind of quick clot type product which can be used for if you're, you know, got a razor, you know, nicked and it just won't stop bleeding and you got a work conference or anything else, you can hit it with this or just a small cut that's not serious but it's just being annoyingly persistent and it's bleeding, you can get some, uh, some blood clotting effect with that and it'll stop the bleeding. Triple antibiotic ointment for uh, just dealing with small cuts and stuff. This is some adhesive, waterproof adhesive tape. You can use it to secure some bandages. Alcohol prep pads for wiping off areas. Some more athletic tape. And then we have a system, just some tweezers, hemostats, and mini scissors for getting out foreign objects out of wounds, cutting little string and tape and whatever else you need to. The one thing that I actually took out of this, or it's not, I didn't take it out, but it's not in this box, is something to wash a wound with. And that's super important. And I just use water. I have a gallon jug that I have in the car for either for drinking or for wound wash. Like I said, I'm not too worried about sterility because of just the philosophy of use of this kit, which is not a shit hit the fan kit. It's just a simple, real first aid kit. By definition of the term first aid, that's what this kit is. So the water does not need to be sterile because I'm just talking about getting foreign bodies, sand and dirt and oil and stuff from a car crash out of the wound so you can one, see what's going on, prevent you know serious infection and get foreign uh, uh, matter out of the wound before covering it and not smashing it in further. So for the most part, you don't need to worry about sterile water for that or even um, any sort of medicated. But if you're interested, look at something called benzoconium chloride, which is a good wound wash, obviously much more expensive than water, but you have gotta have something in there to wash the wound. This one thing that's consistently missing from a lot of people's kits is any sort of wound wash. And uh, there's actually a video that my buddy made about a first aid kit where he specifically mentions this and that's where I got the benzoconium chloride from was him. I'll put the link to that video in the description. But that's it, that is my first aid kit. Just add the water like I was talking about. I forgot to grab that because it's not inside this box. But that's another thing you should have in your car at all times, even when you're only gonna, because even if I have to jog back from my car broken down in a shit hit the fan scenario 10 miles away, I can do that with a gallon of water, no sweat. And, I mean, there'll be a lot of sweating, don't get me wrong, but no problem, I can do it. And they, they could do it certainly with a gallon of water. And then if you need it for wound wash, if you need to fill your radiator, water is just useful for a ton of things. So let me know what you guys think. If there's anything that you do differently in your kits, remember it's all philosophy of use, so tell me what your philosophy of use is, whether it's a get home kit, a shit hit the fan first aid kit. Notice one thing I did not have in here is stuff like sutures, because like I said, my philosophy for this kit is first aid. It's not to sit there and stitch someone up by the side of the road so they, you know, 10 minutes before an ambulance gets there, that doesn't make any sense to me. I do have those products at the house. I do have some suture stuff, just in case there's some crazy shit hit the fan scenario, which I don't think is gonna happen, but I have it just in case. That's about as serious medical supply as I have would be a suturing kit. And uh, because anything beyond that, I'm you're, unless you have a medical facility, medically trained staff, you're gonna be pretty fucked anyway. So I don't bother trying to prepare for scenarios that would be most likely futile without the proper training and, and skills. But this is it. This is just my daily things, three kits that I think should be in your car and what's in them. Let me know what you guys think and make some videos with your kits. And I'll, uh, if they still do, does YouTube still do video responses? If they do, I'll put them as a reply to this and uh, talk to you guys later. Check out rulethewasteland.com, secretlyinternet.com. Thanks for watching.